The demands change every year. For example... We know that a steam-powered vehicle was developed in France as early as 1769, and steam-powered road locomotives became a reality in England around 1800. The first commercially available automobile was manufactured by Carl Benz and his brother in Germany in 1885. In America, a man named Durier demonstrated his car in 1893, and the following year, he sold three of them. Henry Ford's famous quadricycle, obviously a relative of the bicycle, was built in 1896, and in that same year, Ransom Olds introduced his first gasoline-powered automobile. Contrary to popular belief, neither Olds nor Ford were first with mass production. The first cars were merely platforms with four wheels, a seat, a steering device, and an engine. As it developed, some obvious things had to be done right away. Engines were covered to keep out inquisitive fingers and cut down on noise and fumes. Lights were added to aid in night driving. This was the basic arrangement of the curved dash Olds of 1901, the automobile that established Detroit as the automotive center of the U.S. About 1904, the first windscreens appeared, and most of the automobile bodies of this era had what was called Roy de Belge coachwork, taken from a vehicle built to the specifications of the King of Belgium. This general body design, sometimes called a tonneau, with two seats in front and three at the rear, was retained by the industry for almost 15 years. Originally, most accessories were outside the passenger compartment, under the floor or fastened to the back. Even the brakes and gear shift were outside at first, as well as appropriate boxes for tools or picnic lunches. It would be some years before the top, windshield, doors, and basic body would gradually grow together into one piece, but all the pieces necessary for an enclosed automobile were already well developed. Talk about competition. Detroit alone had 25 different car makes, and a total of 45 makes were produced in Michigan. Options such as tops, windshields, and lamps became standard equipment. Speedometers, shock absorbers, and sliding transmissions all added to the weight and size of the automobile, which in turn required bigger engines. Cadillac introduced an electric starter developed by Charles F. Kettering along with a generator battery lighting system. The electric starter made it practical for the first time for a woman to own and drive an automobile. This 1915 Saxon illustrates the trend to light cars in this period. Another car, the Gatabout Roadster, offered a wicker body, and the National had an original seating arrangement, four armchairs that could be moved on casters in any direction. As the economy improved, luxury cars began to appear in greater numbers. Duesenberg brought out the first straight eight and the first four-wheel hydraulic brakes in the U.S. The Stutz Bearcat was the Playboy's car, and one that attracted crowds then, even as now. The 25 millionth U.S. motor vehicle was produced in 1925. The new models featured one-piece windshields, mohair upholstery, and crank-type window lifts. Synthetic quick-drying paints that could be sprayed on and baked gave the industry a wide range of high-gloss finishes. For the first time, more clothes than open models were sold. In 1931, the Rio Royale started the popular trend to slanted windshields. And in 1936, side windows that sloped in at the top were first seen. In 1938, Pontiac moved the gear shift from the floor up onto the steering column to help provide more front foot room. And automatic transmissions were offered by Oldsmobile and Buick for the first time. Over the years, styling and aerodynamics gradually moved the body shell outwards. In the process, the trunk became part of the body shell, and the spare tire moved inside. The headlights flared out, then dissolved into the fender. The hood sheet metal moved out over the radiator, and the fenders elongated, flattened, and gradually became part of the body side. Over this span of time, every major component of the automobile moved inside the body. Today's automobiles are more indicative of the people and times which produce them than any other product. In some future day, they will take their place as one of the important artifacts of today's civilization.